All right, we have here our make sunset function that we've had, uh, that we did quite a while ago. Um, just to review, it takes one input, a picture, and for each P or pixel in the picture, we're going to get all the pixels, make an array, loop through each pixel in that array. We're going to get the blue value, get the green value, set the blue value to um, a little bit smaller than what it was before. We're multiplying by 0.7. Same thing for the green value. So let's go ahead and uh, save this program and test it out. So um, by the way, if you are on a Mac, I, I mentioned this in the last video, but uh, on Catalina, the latest version, they uh, prohibit applications from accessing certain folders without your permission. And it looks like JES uh, doesn't know how to ask for permission. So if you try to save stuff on the desktop, um, you probably won't see any files there. Um, also, uh, your documents folder and your downloads folder, those are all folders that uh, Mac makes uh, applications ask permission to access. And I don't think uh, JES knows even to ask for permission so usually you just won't see anything in those folders. So you can see me, I'm just working in my home directory. I know that's a little less convenient than uh, putting things on your desktop, but in your home directory, you I uh, ha have the media files, and I'm also saving my Python files right there. If you want, you can create a folder in here and use that instead. Um, but we'll go ahead and uh, we're doing pick a file, and we're going to pick our beach. Uh, and just like we did before in class, and we'll just um, make that read it off of the disk. And there we go, there's our beach right there. And we're going to make a sunset out of our beach. So um, the next step we'll do is just make sunset from our beach, and we'll explore again, and we can see it's a little bit more red. So uh, let's keep uh, doing that and seeing if we uh, if we do it once, it makes it a little more red. We'll keep uh, making our sunset, and so now it's looking even more red, and we'll try to keep going. Eventually, our our um, blue and green values will probably get down to zero. Now it's really red, um, and we can we can keep going and just keep doing that. So um, in this uh, lecture today, we're going to learn how to make a video. So I thought it would be nice to make a video of a nice beach that slowly gets overtaken by red, like a nuclear blast just comes and blasts the beach. So um, we're going to do that. Um, the first thing we'll do to make this is we'll, we'll make it uh, get a little less red each time we, we call this function on our picture. So maybe a 0.9 there instead. Okay. And by the way, um, the code for this is on page 95 in your book. It's program 37. So you can uh, type that in, make sure you get a, a nice uh, sunset, and then... Um, we can create a new function. We'll call this make video sunset. Okay. And um, you know, down here, I uh, got my file from pick a file. So if I just go file like that, I'm, I should get the location of my file right here. So I'll copy that and I'll just call the beach equals make picture. And we have it there. Make sure you have a beginning quote mark and an ending quote mark. And this is the full path to your file. If you want, you can use set media path and then just use beach.jpg. Um, you can look more in your book if you want to do that. So what we'll do is we'll create a loop here. And you can use a for loop or a while loop. Um, in this case, I want maybe uh, 15 uh, frames and uh, in a, when you make a video that's uh, 15 different pictures that they show you that kind of move around so um, we'll make 15 frames so we'll go for num in range from 0 to 15 
So if you remember from the um, while loop video, for loops are a lot better when you know exactly how many times you're going to do it. Uh, in this case, I know I want to do it 15 times. So um, from 0 to 14, remember this range does not include the last number. So we'll get a, a number from 0 to 14. And um, with that many times, I might need to uh, change my rate a little bit here and only uh, reduce the, the red and, or the green and blue by 5%. So we're keeping 95% of the red, green, and blue each time, and we're getting rid of 5%. So um, now inside of our loop, what we'll do is we'll call uh, make sunset on our beach. So we can do that uh, 15 times um, right there. And then um, when we're done with our loop, we can return uh, the beach. And so we can see it. Since uh, it's creating the beach inside of the function up here, we need to return it back. Since uh, before this make sunset picture, we have the beach created down in the black part. We pass it in, it modifies it for us so that we're able to see the changes. In this case, it creates the beach picture for us right here, and then uh, we modify it. And then since it created it up in the function, in order to see what we did, we need to return the beach. So in that case, we could say our red beach equals make video sunset. Now remember, this is required right here. Well, not really required if we, if we don't have if we don't capture the beach coming back, then we just make this function do a lot of work and then watch its uh, work go right into the trash can. So we better save the work uh, what it, that it returns to us in a variable or use it somehow. So we'll do that. Um, and I didn't load my program, so we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, load my program and try that again. As you can see, this is going to take a little while because it has to do make sunset 15 times. All right, it finished. And we can explore our red beach to see what it's going to look like in the end. And so maybe um, maybe we're not changing fast enough. I was hoping that it would be redder by then. So um, we can uh, always kind of play with the this number right here and Maybe have it change a little bit more. All right, so uh, I, I quickly cut and did this a little bit off camera, but um, I, I tried it with a 90%, and sure enough, that's a nice red picture at the end. Um, if we click along here, um, we still have some green and blue, so we could go a little ways further. Maybe we can make it a few more frames longer if we want to, but. This is uh, good, I think, for 15 times. This is the amount of red that I want to have. All right. So um, now what we need to do is we need to save, um, since we want a movie of it going from normal to red, we need to save each picture as a file. So um, to do that, uh, there's a function. And of course, you can go up to your JES functions. And you got the pictures right here. And there's a right. Uh, picture to function and that's just going to save this on um, save our pictures now where should we save them well let's just create a folder to save them so so since uh, Mac can't seem to access other folders I'm gonna again put this folder in my home folder in um, right here Maybe after I'm done with the video, I'll just kind of throw these all together in one folder so I don't have a lot of random uh, Python stuff in my home folder here. But I'll go ahead and call this my movie or my sunset movie folder right here. So on, and if you're, if you're on a Windows machine, of course you can save this on your desktop. I'm just putting this in my home folder because, again, if you're on a Mac, JES doesn't know how to ask for permission to access, say, your desktop or your documents or your downloads folder. And so you actually uh, you won't see uh, folders inside of there. So that's why I'm doing it in my home folder. So um, to help get this, this is maybe a little 
trick, we'll, we'll just run set media path right here. And I just know that um, if, if we do set media path and we find my home folder again, and we find that uh, sunset movie uh, folder right there, um, when I call set media path, I, I'm able to choose a folder that I want my media path in. But it also has the added benefit of uh, printing out that path for us, so I don't have to type it in manually. Just make sure we copy it. Make sure you get both the beginning and the ending quote marks when you copy it. And then we'll we'll just um, call this our um, video folder, um, or maybe we could, should call it a path right here. So. This is the folder where we want to save our, our uh, pictures in. So, and we're going to be saving lots of pictures. So um, right here, we'll just uh, write picture two. And then um, we'll use our video path that I created up here. And then we'll add onto it our file name. So um, I'm going to call this a uh, frame. 0.jpg. Okay, and so um, that's a, supposed to be the, the second parameter. The first parameter is what picture we want to save. So again, write picture to take our pictures in memory, our sunset pictures in memory, and we're going to take it from memory and write it to the disk, and that's what write picture does. So it's kind of like the opposite of what make picture would do. Make picture reads it off the disk and puts it in memory. Write picture 2 takes it from memory and writes it back to the disk. And it's going to give that this file name. So um, go ahead and load that program and we'll try this again. And we got our red beach here. And again this will take a little bit of time. And so it finished. So going and checking out that uh, folder that I created, I now see one picture right here. And I can even open this up with uh, the default photo viewer. So in, on Mac, that's usually preview uh, right here. So preview goes ahead and opens it up. On Windows, um, there's probably a different, uh, there's a picture uh, viewer that you uh, have built in by default. You could double click it and you can see that we have that picture. So that's uh, great that we got one picture, but the problem is is that we want uh, several pictures. We want 15 pictures to be able to make a, a movie out of. So um, why did we only get one? The reason we only got one is because we're writing the same, uh, every time we write our picture out, we write it with the same file name. We need a different file name for each picture. So um, this right here will have to be different. And what would be really nice is to be able to use this number right here and then stuff that number in place of the zero. So we'll go ahead and do that. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about what's going on here with this operation. You should know that that is a string concatenation. String concatenation just takes uh, two strings. So we got this string right here and this string right here. Notice uh, I assigned a video path equal to that. And it combines them together into one string. Um, just to show you down here, if we have some um, hello um, string right here, and we add another string right here, class. You see, it combined the two together into one, um, one word. And in here, what we want to do is we want to take the path. And then uh, notice it, and make sure you have the ending slash on that right here. So we have the path. Then we want to add the word frame to the end of that right there. Then we want to add the number uh, frame it is, so whatever this number is want to add right there and then we need to add a .jpg after that. So what we're going to have is something like this. I'll just kind of say path equals slash users slash six eight. Okay and then so we could go path 
plus frame right here. And you can see that now we have the path built up so far that way. So now we'll go path press plus frame plus, we'll try our number zero right here, and that should add it to it. Um, I, mean, I forgot the plus right here. So that should uh, combine all of our string together, but we get this error right here. Um, Python does not know how to take a string type and add a number to it. It's just not an operation that Python has. It only knows how to combine strings together. When we start throwing numbers in, it gets confused. And remember, int is a short for integer, which is a whole number. So how do we overcome that? Well, we go path plus frame plus our number right here, but we turn it into a string. So by uh, just doing str with um, uh, the parentheses and then we put a number inside, it will turn that number into a string. And now Python will know how to combine those together. And then we'll just add on the .jpg at the end. Okay, so now we have the full path name so of where we want it. So let's just do this up here. So we're going to add frame here. And then we want to add it to the number. And we also want to add it there. So we're taking the video path, adding the word frame onto it, or concatenating the word frame onto the end of it. Then we're concatenating on the number right here. I just put zero, so let's replace this with our number. And that comes from our for loop right there. And then plus the last part, the dot JPEG. Now we have to turn that number into a string, so we just go string like that. Okay. So we'll try this now and see um, how successful we are um, making our sunset. Hopefully now we'll have a lot more pictures saved. And now you can see we got exactly what we want. We have our original picture here, or maybe this has been reduced by 10% uh, already, but as we move down, as the number of the frame increases, we can see that our um, beach uh, turns more and more red until it feels like maybe this is a nuclear blast headed our way. All right, so now what we need to do is combine all those pictures we made into a video. So we don't want to make a video for each picture, so make sure we get out of that for loop. We, after we make each picture and they're all written to the disk, then we can make the video. So notice I backed up here to not be inside of that for loop. Okay, and to make a, a movie, it's a, just one function call, kind of a long name for it. It's make movie from initial file, okay? And then we just need the full path of the file. So from there, it is video path. And then we'll concatenate on the first frame. So that's frame 0.jpg right there, okay? So we'll um, load that program. And um, the last thing we want to do, we really don't want the picture at the end handed back to us. We want the movie. And um, so we'll make the movie and it will give the movie back to us. So now we can say movie equals make video sunset. And if I use an equal sign instead of a minus sign, this will work. And again, that'll take some time. And now we can see if we type movie right here, that it's a movie with 15 frames. Well, how do we see the movie? There is a, um, just like there's an explore function, there is a play movie function. And we, it wants to know what movie you want to play. So the movie that the sunset returned back to us, or the make video sunset returned back to us. Okay, so we have uh, this up here. 
uh, just make sure you can see it all. Um, we can uh, go through each frame, uh, frame by frame, and uh, see how it, how it looks. If you notice, we got the frame number up here, and then you can just click Play Movie, and it looks kind of weird. It like kind of flashes like wet and right. What what's going on here? So um, let's uh, go through this frame by frame. So here's frame zero. Yes, that's our initial uh, uh, beach picture. Then that's a little bit more red. Yes, that's going good. And then frame two is a lot more red. So that was kind of a long jump. And then frame three, uh, a little more, four, five, six, seven. Oh, seven goes back and now it's uh, light again. And then um, eight, nine. Okay, so eight and nine uh, kind of look better. 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, and 15. Or right, back to the initial. So what happened is the pictures were not sorted the right way. It kind of got out of order. So this make movie from initial file didn't know the right order to put the, the pictures in. So the question is, how did this sort the pictures? And it sorts it by alphabetical order. So um, the Mac here, a Mac and Windows, I think both are kind of a, do a little bit more intelligent sorting and put this here. Well, the way that um, alphabetical order would sort this is we'd have 0, 1, and then 10 would get inserted here because 0, um, because 1 comes before 2. So um, let me put that back. So 1 comes before 2 in the alphabetical order. So 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 will all get put right in here and then we'll go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So let me write that out so you can see it. So I just put in comments here the order that it will sort it. So we'll get 0 go first, then 1, then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, because the 1 in this position right here comes before uh, 2. So all of these get pushed here and then we get 2, 3. So what we need to do is find a way to name our files so they will get sorted the right way. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to, on all of these single digit numbers, we're going to add a 0 in front of it right here. So we're not going to add a 0 in front of these, right, um, 10 through 14, but we're going to add a 0 in front of all the rest of them. So, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And now that way, these guys right here that are in out of position will have to go down here. And let me uh, put a comma. I'm just that's uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we get nine right here. And then they'll sort correctly if if the zero through nine have a uh, if frames 0 through 9 have a 0 in front of them, it'll sort them all correctly. And uh, that's exactly what we want. So how do we do that? Well, um, we come up here and we just ask if our number is less than 10, then we know we need to add a 0 in front of it. Else right here, let me put in my colons. We'll do write picture to. So the ones that need a zero before it, we'll go ahead and put the zero right here in the name, and then we'll concatenate on that. So that'll happen for numbers zero through nine, because those are the numbers that are less than 10. And then 10 and above, we won't put a zero in front of it, and the full number, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, will get concatenated right to the end of that. So go ahead and try that program now, and uh, let's go ahead and um, one thing to do before we run this again is to 
take all of our pictures and erase them because we're changing the names that means these guys right here will have a, a frame 0 and a frame 0 0 we also have a frame 1 and a frame 0 1 so it's probably good to just delete all of these old pictures out of there and let them generate new ones right there so um, now we save our program and we can run it of course we want to um, capture the movie that's been made and again this will take a little while to make the movie and now we can go ahead and play our movie here and let's see uh, see how our movie works so now we can see that nice slow gradual it's a beautiful day and suddenly a, a nuclear blast comes and hits us now to finish up this uh, video, I want to give you a little bit of help on your homework. In your homework, you're going to make a bouncing ball movie, kind of like a screensaver you've seen on some TVs or uh, other computers, where you got a moving object and it comes and it hits, hits walls and bounces off of them, kind of like um, this, the way that my mouse is moving. So it just kind of bounces off the walls and you... Uh, need to make it, I, I can't quite remember, but you can look in the homework description. I think it might be 300 frames as you move uh, this ball around. Now, um, I've, uh, I've created a function right here that will move a rectangle around on the screen. So the first thing I'll do is I'll set up some uh, coordinates here, X and Y, the rectangle will stop start in the top uh, corner of the screen. Of course, I'm setting the same uh, video path from before. Now, I'm only going to do it for uh, 30 frames right here, but we'll make an empty uh, canvas or an empty picture. We'll add a rectangle to the X and Y position, so the first time it will be 0, 0. After we do that, we add some amount to X and Y. Now, it doesn't have to be the same amount. If I do this, then it was going to move from, uh, if it's a, since it's a square pitch, it will move from top corner to left corner. If I want it to move, say, down a little faster, then it moves um, to the right. So again, this will move it to the right 10 pixels. This will move it down 10 pixels. All right, 15 pixels now. It will move a little faster down, then it will move to the right. So you can uh, go ahead and change these values and have your uh, rectangle or your, you're going to want a circle instead of a rectangle too, but you're going to, can have your circle go in kind of different directions. You can also decide to start it in the center by changing these coordinates right here. So, and then we just do the same trick before. We, after we add the rectangle to our picture, we'll write it out um, in onto our file. And we're gonna, I'm using the same folder before. I know it says sunset movie, but we'll just uh, keep it simple and make it the same folder. And then we'll create our movie and load it. Now, of course, we don't want all of these sunset frames getting inserted into our uh, picture. They're probably getting overwritten anyway, but you might want to delete them before you run this. So what we'll do, we'll, we'll have our other movie, and that will equal our make moving rectangle movie. Right here, uh, make sure we load our program. And let's see here, um, make empty canvas is not defined. And I believe it's because that's called make empty picture. And I forgot to add the height and the width onto my picture. So we'll just make this a, a, a small rectangle right here. Uh, so 15 pixels by 15 pixels. And now we can go ahead and play our movie. And um, although that did make a movie, I'm writing my beach to the movie, and the beach happens to be a global variable here. So we should probably want to write our canvas um, to the... To, the canvas that we created here and added the rectangle to, uh, we probably want to write that out, not the beach. So that was a little copy and paste error. And so now we'll, let's uh, try this again. And 
and you can see we got our uh, my square uh, moves down there of course um, eventually it falls completely off the picture so you'll want to you want to fix that um, right there so how do you fix that well um, instead of always adding a the same a number to it that's always going to move it to the right and this is always going to move it down and maybe you might want to create new variables and D for the change in X or Delta X and we want that to be 10 and then Delta Y we want that to be 15 right here so instead of adding 10 every time we'll just add Delta X and Delta Y now after you add it you might want to add a check after here to see if you've moved the um, X and Y off of the picture and if you have moved it off of the picture then change your then and again this is all going to be here because this is the initial uh, direction they're moving but now you can make those negative numbers so if I move off the right side of the picture then um, start uh, subtracting uh, 10 instead of adding 10 and that will cause the, the ball to move back to the left and of course if you move off the bottom then start subtracting and then it will start moving up now you're also going to have to have checks on the top because after once it hits the top of your picture it'll start going negative and move off of the top of your picture so now you'll want to start adding to it so um, the other thing that you'll have to deal with um, is I'll leave that for you to do for your homework the other thing you'll have to deal with is since you're going to have 300 frames to get them all sorted you're going to ha have to add another um, another condition here sorry it's a else if condition if my number is less than 100 so um, you're going to have a numbers single numbers 0 through 9 and you're going to want them to be 3 long this time so you're going to put two zeros and then the number there of course eventually you'll um, hit to uh, 10 so now you want 10 to have one zero in there so if the number is less than 100 you probably want to have one zero in there and then of course if it's greater than 100 eventually we'll get to eventually we'll get to frame 99 and then at frame 100 we don't want any zeros in there so you're going to have to add uh, three different uh, choices one to add two zeros for the single digit numbers one to add one zeros for two digit numbers and one to add no zeros for three digit numbers so um, those are you will be your two challenges in completing this um, this is a good start you'll have to first uh, add in uh, checks to see if you've gone off the edge of the picture and if you have change uh, the direction make these numbers negative if you go off the top or the left side you're gonna have to make them positive so um, and then hopefully you'll have all the ball bouncing around and have a nice uh, little screen saver by the time you're done thanks for watching